Let's talk about the healing power of nature. The healing power of nature is the inherent self-organizing and healing process that is present in all living systems that establishes, maintains, and restores health. Plants have played a major role in the healing process. And uh, treatment of human traumas and diseases worldwide depends on plants. The demand for medicinal plants is increasing in both developed and developing country due to growing recognition of the natural product, the natural, the plants, the herbs, the mushrooms, the moss. And herbal medicine becomes a very important part of both traditional and modern system of medicines. Our role as herbalists or the naturopathic doctors is to uh, facilitate and augment this process by identifying and removing obstacles to health and recovery and by supporting that creation of a healthy internal and external environment. We have what is called underlying causes. And they studied them a lot in the functional medicine already. You see, the medicine is developing. It's not um, like the old-fashioned medicine where they only work on the symptoms. And um, the underlying causes of illness and disease uh, must be identified and removed before completely recovery can occur. Symptoms can cause diseases, uh, but can also serve as expression of the body's attempt to defend itself. For instance, the example is high fever. To adapt, uh, um, this is with the goal to adapt or to heal itself like the high fever. They say that uh, we need to heal the whole person. Why? Because health and disease result from a complex of physical, mental, emotional, genetic, environmental, social, and other factors. Naturopathic medicine and herbalism in particular recognize that the harmonious functioning of all aspects of the individual is essential to health and uh, those who work with me know that all the variables like hydration, nutrition, movement, happiness are included in the healing prescription because this is part of our environment. The multifactorial nature of health and disease requires a personalized and comprehensive approach to diagnosis and treatment. It's very important to evaluate and assess the, uh, all the parts of the human constitution. So um, let's see what is the history of the medicinal mushrooms and we'll also talk a little bit about moss. Um, the history of medicinal mushrooms, we know all we relate in our mind with China because um, the tradition in Chinese medicine, which is very old, uh, older than 5,000 years known to us and uh, other in indigenous healing process as well, uh, mushrooms are very much used and uh, mushrooms were valued for their various health benefits and their use in traditional medicine was based on observation and practical evidence. In ancient China, medicinal mushrooms were used to promote longevity, boost the immune system and improve overall health uh, the Chinese also believed that mushrooms have properties that could improve mental clarity and spiritual well-being. 
some of the most commonly used medicinal mushrooms in the traditional Chinese medicine include uh, reishi, shiitake, maitake, and cordyceps. Maybe you heard of many of them. In other parts of the world, like Europe and South America, mushrooms were also used for their medicinal properties. They were known. For exa example, the ancient Greeks used mushrooms to treat a variety of ailments, and the Aztecs uh, in Southern America uh, used them to mm, treat uh, uh, live different conditions as uh, antibiotics were for their antibiotic uh, properties. In modern time, uh, scientific research has confirmed many of the health benefits traditionally associated with the mushrooms. They, mushrooms contain various bioactive compounds such as polysaccharides, beta-glucans, and uh, triterpenoids that have shown to have anti-inflammatory, immune-modulating, and anti-tumor effects. Very important is to understand that uh, tumors being benign or malignant um, occur in us human beings and the body is supposed to kill it or a cell that doesn't do its job properly is supposed to destroy itself. It doesn't happen like that with the tumors um, and the body chambers them if it can't kill it for a later moment to deal with them. But if we constantly uh, load the body with um, different foods that we are not supposed to eat or um, different substances that are harmful for our bodies from the environment, then the body will never have the time to deal with it. During that time, that tumor gets bigger and bigger. And unfortunately, um, it doubles its size and that's why there are periods of the growing of the tumor that are life-threatening because it becomes literally double and the double doubles and the double doubles and um, people very often die because of that. The statistics is that nine of 10 people in Canada in their lifetime will be diagnosed with some kind of tumor being benign or malignant. And this is very scary statistics. I bet you, you um, don't know a person that is not touched by cancer in a family or friend or etc. It is that spread. It's very, very scary. So today, med medicinal mushrooms are widely used in various forms as capsules, teas, tinctures, and extracts as natural and complementary uh, therapy for a range of health conditions or as a main source of healing. This is important to understand that we can take them uh, many ways possible. So this is about um, the mushrooms. Um, now I would like to mention the benefits of the mushrooms. The benefits are because they have uh, those polysaccharides, which are large carbohydrate molecules that contain small sugar molecules that are joined chemically. The main functions of the polysaccharides are structural support of the cell, energy storage, and cellular communication. These are Foundation, the foundations of the building and functioning of our cells. That's why the medicinal mushrooms are so much um, treasured 
by um, the medicine, the herbal medicine, and uh, many uh, countries and their local medicinal practices. They are very often pivotal in the immunomodulating effects uh, of herbs. So uh, there are some impressive results that happen. First is the general improvement of the many immune response uh, measures. Then we have the T cells um, support. The T cells are T, they are lymphocytes that are part of the immune system and they develop from stem cells in the bone marrow. They help protect the body from infection and might help uh, also uh, fight cancer. So they also are called T cells, as I said, or uh, thymocyte, if you read the literature and come across that word. Then uh, the mushrooms, medicinal mushrooms, have anti tumor activities. They increase certain types of protein, uh, very beneficial proteins that uh, clean and clear the body. Uh, they also uh, increase the phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is a cellular process of ingesting and eliminating of large particles, including microorganisms and foreign substances that don't have to be where they are because they cause havoc and damage in the body. Very beneficial edible mushrooms uh, with healing properties include shiitake mushroom, maitake, uh, maitake mushroom, agaricus, Blase, which I'll mention a few things later on, button mushroom, wood ear, uh, tremella, poria, and enoki. Very important, beneficial edible mushrooms. Non edible mushrooms that are beneficial for our health, um, rich in B glucans, include reishi and coriolus mushroom. In Japan, a few mushrooms are approved for um, treatment of cancer, which I think is very advanced, uh, very beneficial for people who are going through uh, cancer treatment. Based upon uh, some human studies, many mushrooms appear to have immunomodulatory, uh, anti-tumor, antimicrobial, Lipid lowering, which means anti-cholesterol and glucose regulating properties. Isn't it absolutely amazing? So why mushrooms are immunomodulators? Medicinal mushrooms are considered immunomodulators because they contain polysaccharides, beta glucans and other bioactive components that have been shown to modulate or regulate the immune system. This is their greatest property. These compounds can stimulate the immune system to respond more effectively to pathogens such as viruses, bacteria and cancer cells. They can also help to balance the immune response, reducing inflammation and uh, preventing overactivation of the immune system, which can lead to autoimmune disorders. For example, beta glucans found in certain mushrooms, such as shiitake or reishi, have been shown to activate immune cells called macrophages and natural killer NK cells, which play an important role in the body's defense against pathogens and cancer cells. Polysaccharides found in mushrooms, such as metake and turkey tail, have also been shown to have immunomodulatory effect uh, by increasing the productions of cytokines, which are signaling molecules that help to coordinate the immune response. 
as you can see, over, overall, the immunomodulatory effect of medicinal mushrooms have been uh, extensively studied. We know so much about it nowadays and are believed to contribute to their many health benefits. However, it is important to note that more research is needed to fully understand the mechanisms by which these compounds affect uh, the immune system and to determine the optimal dosages and forms of mushroom supplements for various health uh, conditions. You know that um, our the medicine, the orthodox medicine is very big on quantifying about uh, anything we take, they are interested of exactly how much. In herbalism, we say a glass of, a cup of, like a teaspoon, but how full is this teaspoon or tablespoon, we don't really know. So I would like to present you, before I continue with the moss and mushrooms, the five kingdoms as we call them, how uh, our planet is organized. So you understand better about mushrooms and moss. So the first part, uh, where um, are the bacteria and unicellular organism like the blue green algae is called the monera. Then we have the second part, uh, the protista. The protista include algae, the algae which are multicellular creatures. Uh, the blue-green algae are um, types of bacteria actually, but they're called blue-green algae. Then we have the fungi, and today we are interested exactly in the fungi. And the fungi includes yeast, molds, mushrooms. Then we have plantae, uh, which includes uh, liverworts. These are plants with no roots, include mosses, uh, vascular plants like farn, um, and uh, seed producing plants. And then we have the animalia. This is the fifth kingdom. It starts uh, from every organism, from sponges like lufa, you probably heard about that, uh, through jellyfish, fish, uh, reptiles, birds, and mammals. It's important to understand where the mushrooms and the moss uh, stand in our uh, animal kingdom. So Irish moss and Iceland moss. Let's say a few words about that. Uh, both type of moss are safe to consume and you can find them in the health store. Moss uh, is not uh, generally considered a medical plant, but uh, some can be consumed. And um, for example, those two mosses are widely used in herb herbalism because of the following properties. Both of them have the following three top properties. They're demulcent, which means that they're soothing the mucosa or the tissues. Um, they are mucilaginous or mucilaginous also pronounced they have viscous properties. Um, if you know the plant okra, okra is very slimy. It has viscous properties as well. They're nutritive, which means that they nourish the blood. Very important. And um, Iceland moss is as well a tonic, which means it tones the entire body, different systems. Um, they are mainly used for pulmonary troubles, like anything related to the lungs, bronchitis, coughs. Um, also, they're very soothing and strengthening to those tissues. And I would like to offer you a decoction from uh, Iceland uh, moss. 
And uh, this decoction uh, boils from, you boil uh, from cold water. You put 28 gram from the herb, the Iceland moss, and uh, you boil it in about 700 grams, uh, milliliters of water. And uh, then you strain and you consume. Um, the Irish moss can be used also for pneumonia and tuberculosis. So you see how you can use mosses um, because they're very close to uh, fungi. That's why I decided to uh, talk about mosses as well. So uh, let's talk now about the mushrooms. Um, the mushrooms, turkey tail is the first one I would like to mention because it's very popular, especially when it comes to cancer. A lot of people use it, especially um, cancer of the digestive system, which includes cancer of the liver. Uh, it also calls hepatoprotective, hepatoprotective mushroom turkey tail and also it's good for overall health and you can take it uh, as a prevention for your health and of course immunomodulator like almost every mushroom it supports the immune system so turkey tail uh, can be found in the health store and you just have to uh, follow the prescription for to use it Another interesting uh, mushroom is Agaricus blase muriel. Agaricus blase muriel. It's a mushroom that is popular in Brazil. It's popular in Japan. And um, it's widely cultivated because it's a nutrition, nutrition properties. Um, and because of its medicinal uses just as well. Uh, it was traditionally used to treat hepatitis, to treat arteriosclerosis, high cholesterol, diabetes, uh, skin problems, and cancer. It can be found online as well, uh, and it's very, very beneficial to be uh, taken even as a prevention. And the last mushroom I would like to mention, this is Enukitake. This mushroom uh, is, um, has bioactive polysaccharides, uh, FVE proteins, and ri uh, ribosome uh, inactivity, inactivating protein that can uh, regulate the immune system. So as you can see, the Enokitake mushroom is a very, very potent mushroom. And it has anti-cancer properties and anti-inflammatory properties. It also can boost and protect your immune system. So mushrooms uh, really can help us. And uh, let me conclude that the plants uh, as a whole, they rule our planet. It's very important to understand that plants feed the animals and we feed off the animals and the plants. Whatever the plants decide to deliver to us, that's what we eat. And we are very, very dependent on them. Uh, so it's worth knowing about herbs and different mosses, mushrooms, and other components that can heal us.